praise the Lord and I greet all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever you are and uh, you are listening to God's voice and I pray that this meditation from God's word shall be a real blessing to you and uh, you shall hear the voice of God through his word. And the meditation is taken from a very familiar and famous verse in the Old Testament. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14, which says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and heal their land. This is a promise given to us by the Lord God Almighty himself in the Old Testament, but very much relevant to the New Testament church as well. And as we meditate on this passage, I pray that the Holy Spirit will open our minds and enlighten us to understand how we can be benefited from this. Now, this is a direct message from God to those who desire a mighty visitation or a great revival in our personal life, in our family, and also in our church mainly, and through the church, the society, and the people among whom we are ministering, and you are ministering God's word. And those who believe and desire such a revival must ask for it. And when we ask, we must ask exactly in the same way that God has prescribed us to ask. And this is God's way. And um, there is no shortcut for a divine move to change our dry spiritual condition. There is no shortcut, my friend. And God knows our need. But he wants his children, nevertheless, to ask him. Because only when we are desperate for it, we ask. And that is exactly what God desires. He is not going to throw his blessings on people who don't care. He wants to know how sincere and how thirsty and how much you are longing for such a visitation of God that will not only revive us and change us, but also it is going to change uh, the condition of our church and thus through the church it's going to change the condition of our society and the people among whom we are pre preaching. And we need to ask in humility and in repentance. And we find in the Bible, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, that whenever God's people thus prayed, something always marvelous happened. Number one, always when people of God ask in this way, there was deliverance. I just want to cite two or three examples. Deliverance. In Exodus chapter 3 and the following chapters uh, record the deliverance of the people of Israel from the land of Egypt and from the slavery and bondage. And how did it happen? The Israelites were slaves. And they did not have a leader, they did not have a king, they did not have a government, they did not have weapons, they did not have soldiers or an army, and they do not have, they did not have anything. And the only weapon they had and they used 
was prayer. And that's what God told Moses when he appeared and sent him as the deliverer. I heard the cry of my people and I have seen the, the, the hardship that they are going through. I have seen it all, their sufferings, their pain, and thus out of their pain, the agony, and they raised their voices in crying and weeping, and I heard them. That was the weapon. And they cried, they prayed, in other words. And what happened? One bright uh, night and morning, nearly two million people, including children and women and uh, and, and others who were adult, walked out of Egypt and through the gate, out of Egypt forever, from under the very nose of Pharaoh, the mighty king. Deliverance is an answer to the prayer. And the second example I would like to cite is found in Second Kings chapter uh, 19. Verses 14 to 19, and then again 35 to 37. And what we read there is what uh, the account of a miraculous deliverance for the people of Israel from the power of the mighty king of Assyria. And they cried out, the Assyrian army was so vast and numerous. And the Israelites knew that they did not stand a chance with this mighty king coming with his vast army with all the chariots and other weapons of warfare. The only thing they could do under King Hezekiah was to go into the house of God and turn their faces towards God and seek God. That's what they did. And they told God, God, we are helpless. It is true that these kings in the past have destroyed many nations. They are very cruelly treated. And now they have come against us, your people. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And you know what? They did not even have to fight this battle. God just sent an angel, and that one angel put to death 185 soldiers of uh, Assyrian army. Mighty deliverance in answer to the prayers of God's people. And the third example I would like to cite is found in Daniel chapter 6. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. And when they usually kill the, uh, whom they want to kill, the criminals, the worst kind of criminals, they would put them in the lion's den and uh, these lions would be starved several days so that before the man land up there, they would be devoured by these hungry lions. And Daniel, Daniel, Daniel was put in that kind of a lion's den. Now you know what happened. The hungry lions kept a company with God's prophet Daniel. And Daniel's God kept him, protected him, and delivered him, his prophet, from the lion's den. What was the reason? Daniel turned his face to God. He had built up a habit for himself that he would pray to God three times a day, morning, noon, and even time. And he would not allow anything to hinder that, to interfere with that time. What a mighty God we serve. And then in Acts chapter 12, this chapter begins 
with the martyrdom of Apostle James. And King Herod saw that his killing James pleased the Jews. He set his eyes on Peter. So he arrested Peter with the intention of putting him to death the next morning. That is the way the chapter begins. But the same chapter ends, how? With the death of Herod the king, whose scheme was to kill Peter as he killed Apostle James. And what was the one reason for that mighty manifestation of God's deliverance? Peter was delivered miraculously from the clutches of the, of the King Herod. Why? Because the church gathered together and had an all night to prayer without ceasing. And so this deliverance came in response to God's people's prayer, the church's prayer. And my friends, is our God different? He is the same God of the Old Testament we have in the New Testament as well. He still listens to the prayers of his people and he responds to their prayers and bring mighty deliverance. Otherwise, it would be impossible. And the second thing I would like you to notice is um, there is not only mighty deliverance, but when people of God prayed, there also was a mighty manifestation of uh, God's power. Esther chapter 4, verses 15 to 17, 15, 16 and 17. We see the final outcome of uh, all that was uh, happening under King Sexus. In other words, his other name was Ahasuerus. And the Jews were marked out for total annihilation. There was a man second in command in his kingdom. And this Ahasuerus was a ruler or king of a vast kingdom. Stretching from India to Kush about 127 provinces. And there was a man very powerful who find favor with King Ahasuerus. His name was Haman. He determined to get rid of every Jew from the face of the earth. That was his desire. That was his determination. And his grudge was against one Jew by the name of Mordecai, the uncle to Esther. And his parents either taken captive or they died. And this girl, uh, her, her, uh, Mordecai's niece, was brought up by Mordecai. And now she became the queen or the wife of a king's excess. And his grudge was against this Mordecai. And the reason was Mordecai would not bow before him. That was the reason. And the month and the date, everything was determined and the king himself uh, sent this through a letter, a proclamation, throughout his all 127 provinces. And the Jewish people became so troubled, they began to raise their voices and cry to God. There was big lamentation all over the provinces, hearing this news. And, uh, and this news was sent to Queen Esther, by her uncle Mordecai. And by Esther's instruction, 
fasting and prayer was organized for three days. While Esther herself, along with her maids, was going, were going to fast and pray. And uh, uh, at the instruction of Esther, the entire Jewish community throughout his, this kingdom, they began to fast and pray for three days. And the king, uh, Queen Esther knew that it was almost an impossible situation because the law was anyone who approaches the king without prior permission and unless the king stretched out his rod, his scepter, that person will be killed. And Esther sent this message. For the last 30 days I have not been called. And if I go, I will be killed. You fast and pray and I will do the same thing. And the word that she spoke became, even today, as an inspiration and a strength to hundreds and thousands of people of God all around the world to take a strong stand for righteousness. He said, if I perish, I perish. With that determination, with prayer. And she went, the rest is history. All of you know this. What a mighty manifestation on that day and date when the Jewish people were supposed to be annihilated. Not a single Jew died or perished. Haman even erected a gallow in order to hang Mordecai. But who were hanged? Haman and his wife and children and his entire household. But Mordecai took the place of Haman and the king. What a mighty manifestation of God's intervention. Do you know one interesting thing is the word God is not mentioned in the entire book of Esther. There are four chapters. But in every chapter, in every verse, you can see very clearly the hand of God working for this miraculous deliverance and the mighty manifestation of God's power. What a mighty God we serve. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the third things lesson that we can learn from this verse is when people of God pray in this manner, there was a revival, always. Revival is always born out of prayer and studying of the scriptures. Now one example is in the Old Testament. The city of Nineveh was a very wicked city and very cruel people. And they treated people with cruelty and without any mercy. And God determined to destroy that city. And so he sent his prophet Jonah. But Jonah so hated Nineveh, he didn't want to go. He took another route and went. And you know the story how Jonah was taken back and sent back to, to Nineveh. And you know, the interesting thing is, the message he was to declare was, repent or else in 40 days, your city will be destroyed completely. You will be destroyed. The king to the, down to the beggar on the street. You know, my brothers and sisters, what happened? When Jonah went, he was so upset and angry. He never told that if you repent, 
God will be merciful to you. He never said that. He only declared this, 40 days from now, you will be destroyed and your city will be no more. That is the only thing he said. But hearing this, everyone, including the king, heard this. And suddenly, something happened to the king. He declared a national day of prayer and fasting for three days. A national day. And, and, and they all prayed. Grown-ups, adults, boys and girls, children, even the animals were forced to fast. Not even drinking water. Hard fasting. They repented. They humbled themselves. Thinking, saying, perhaps this God may show mercy to us. And so let us repent and change our ways and call upon this God. And that's what they did. They fasted and prayed and sought the Lord with their whole heart, a heathen king and a heathen kingdom, seeking the God of the Bible. And what happened? Nineveh was spared. And of course, Jonah was very angry and upset. That is another matter. But the point is, in response to these heathen people's prayer and seeking his face in repentance, God brought about a mighty deliverance for them. They were saved, their king was, was saved, city was saved, and what a mighty revival. And my friends, he still responds to humility and repentance and a change of heart and a turning to God with a sincere heart. And I pray that we who are the New Testament people of God, why we need such a visitation of God today. We need such a move of God. We need such a move of God in a great revival, my dear brothers and sisters. And prayer brings us closer to God. Listen to this. Prayer brings us closer to one another in love. And prayer breaks the barriers. And especially when we pray together, there will be a mighty outpouring of God's amazing power. And the things otherwise impossible will begin to happen in our movement and in our, our, our churches and in our leadership and in our nation. And the people of this nation will know that Jesus Christ truly is Lord. Those who pray, they will enjoy spiritual rest. Those who pray can rest. With Jesus, we don't need to worry. When Jesus stands and stretches out his hand, impossible things will happen and we will rejoice. This God is the same yesterday, today and forever. Every revival was born in the past through prayer, in prayer, in the fire of a prayer and in the studying of his unchanging word. Let us turn to this and experience God's miraculous. God bless you as you are obedient to God's ways. Amen.